is an analysis. Okay, go ahead, Chen Feng. Thank you, Ovidio, for the introduction. And I also thank uh, uh, all the organizers for organizing this wonderful uh, series of online seminar. So we can have uh, you know, a lot of activities, uh, um, even though we cannot meet in person. And also thank uh, uh, and Daniela for the invitation, particularly. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, some uh, new inequalities uh, we obtained uh, in the study of partial differential equation and uh, you know, related to geometry. Okay, um, so um, some of these uh, uh, inequalities I reported before in seminars at different places. Uh, in particularly and then like UCLA I have been there a couple of times and also uh, Brown universities. Um, so I will kind of uh, give uh, some summary of what I we obtained before and focus more on this recent result on the uh, higher dimensional case. Um, so this are uh, based on joint work with uh, Amir Maradifan from UC Riverside. Uh, Andrew Chan from uh, Princeton University, and uh, Ye Yao Hu and uh, Wei Hong Xie from uh, Central uh, South University of China. Okay, uh, so uh, let's start from very simple uh, situation. Uh, suppose we have a sphere in the three dimensional space, and uh, we know that uh, any portion of the uh, surface can be conformally transformed to a disk if the region is simply connected. And uh, uh, indeed, we can think that we have plastic uh, disk, we can stretch it uh, in uh, the same scale in every direction at every point. Every point. Uh, that's the conformal transformation. And we can you know, stretch in the way that we can cover this uh, disk, uh, a portion of the sphere. Uh, but there are many such ways um, to do. Uh, so we want to you know, consider two different ways of the stretching, um, well, the conformal transformation from a disk uh, to a sphere so that they will keep the stretching at the boundary to be the same for these two um, stretch. Well, mathematically, we can say, we can have a conformal mapping, um, say um, T1, which maps the uh, sphere, uh, the region of the sphere, The region sphere to the uh, general region, say, simply connected in R2, so that its boundary sphere and the, the, the patch is moved to the boundary of this domain. Right? Um, and we have another uh, region. Let me use different color. So, and this also conform is transformed to the same region, but we keep the boundary um, to have the same stretch. So, so mathematically we can say we have a conformal um, transformation with conformal factor to be the same on the boundary of the domain. Now, if we assume that these two surface, you know, tier two patch of surface are not exactly the same. You know, they are not uh, um, isometric. Then we say that the total area of these two uh, patches of uh, surface will be bigger than four pi, the area of this unit sphere. So that's the so-called uh, uh, sphere, sphere covering inequality 
um, which is very simple geometric inequality. Uh, well, simple to state, uh, which we discovered recently uh, with uh, Emil Moradifan. And this inequality we can also write in the way of a PDE uh, form. Uh, so it actually related to such a, a new view equation. Suppose we have this, uh, two solutions to this type of new view equation. Uh, so with the right-hand side um, could be uh, non-zero, but we want them to be positive. Uh, suppose uh, uh, for solution W2, um, the corresponding right-hand side W5, two is bigger than F1 uh, for the uh, solution W1. And the, and then these two um, solution coincide on boundary, but they are not the same. So, so suppose we say W2 is strictly bigger than W1. Then the integral of these two term added together will be bigger than four pi. So that's the uh, statement of the sphere covering inequality uh, in terms of uh, PDEs. Well, why do we come up with such a um, somehow strange inequality and for these two can, kind of portion of the surfaces? Um, does, does it make sense at the first glance? Well, uh, I'll give you an example, uh, which is the actually symmetric solution uh, for the Duvier equation. So the right hand side is identically zero. So we, we know there's a, there's a family of solution which can be written explicitly by this formula. Okay, so, so this lambda just change the scaling. Uh, so um, the solution would look like um, um, in this picture. So if you have two different lambda and they will intersect exactly once this radio solution. Uh, well, actually they, they intersect uh, on a circle if we see it uh, in two dimensional space. And if for such solution, we can compute exactly the uh, integral, say on disk, where um, these two solutions intersect. And you do the computation, and, uh, which is just calculus. Uh, uh, you, you get exactly four pi. So at least in the special case of nice situation, um, this inequality, sphere inequality makes sense, right? It's true. Indeed, it has achieved the uh, extreme value. But then uh, we try to prove it uh, because we, we want to use this kind of inequality for the study I will explain later. Uh, so the idea would, you know, one prove it is to try to rearrange the general case to the Symmetric case. It is actually a symmetric case or radio symmetric case. Uh, so I'm not going to go to the detail of the re rearrangement, uh, but we want to say that we arrange first the one of the solutions, the smaller one, for example, to be actually symmetric. Then we arrange the difference of the two solutions uh, according to the rearrangement of the region, then we get uh, a new function, um, which uh, uh, is radio symmetric. The good thing is that after the rearrangement, we will get an inequality like this. Okay. Uh, so so uh, this new um, function, which is radio symmetric, we are uh, 
uh, such a fact, this uh, kind of weak version of uh, uh, differential inequality. So it, it's something like uh, um, r plus u plus 2u given equal to zero, but in the weak sense, uh, as explained uh, just before, just this weak sense. Well, the, the key is that for such weak uh, sub-solution, which corresponds to a surface, which has kind of a weak Gaussian curvature, less than equal to one. So we can understand this way. Uh, so that related to the isoparametric inequality for surfaces with curvature condition. Um, so there's a parametric inequality. The classic one is that uh, says that if we have a Euclidean domain, uh, then the boundary lens will control the area of the region by this exact form. Um, then if we consider a region on the surface, particularly say on a sphere, standard sphere, and then this in, as, as, parametric, as a parametric inequality will be slightly different. Uh, namely, we have to subtract uh, this uh, region A omega from four pi, which is the total area of the uh, sphere. Uh, and now, of course, if uh, uh, the sphere is large, so with radius r, then we have this uh, a scaling uh, factor. And then when the r goes to infinity, this term will go to zero, we get to the Euclidean case. Um, but for our uh, purpose, we are actually considering more general um, sphere or surface. So with a conformal factor of the surface to be equal to V. And suppose this uh, surface has a curvature, Gaussian curvature less than equal to one. Then the conformal factor actually satisfies this uh, so-called uh, Gaussian curvature equation uh, with Kx to be the Gaussian curvature. In this case, we have uh, the so-called Alexandrov both inequality, which is a uh, kind of, uh, you know, as parametric inequality for such surface. So this, uh, so, so this, uh, uh, as uh, Alexandrov both inequality, which has this uh, integral form. So basically, this integral on the boundary gives the length of the boundary. Uh, in this conformal metric. And this uh, double integrals, of course, corresponding to the area. So this is just a general version of this uh, as a parametric inequality on the surface with a Gaussian curvature less than equal to one. So uh, this is the standard uh, classical result, but for our purpose, we only have a kind of Gaussian curvature in a weak sense uh, for such conformal factor, for such as conformal transformation. But we say we can still have this as parametric inequality, same type of, you know, as a parametric inequality like this. Uh, so that will give us an inequality for this, you know, rearranged version of the um, solution W2. Uh, which satisfy this uh, as a parametric inequality. Then we can compare um, this solution with u lambda one and the u lambda, which uh, like this, uh, so we have two. This is u lambda one, this is u, lambda, u lambda. And this u is something like a, Rearranged version of W. So it may not be bigger than U lambda. Uh, uh, so let me put this. Here. 
So it may not be bigger than U number one, but we know eventually its, its area or its integral is bigger than U number one after rearrangement from this uh, as parametric inequality. Okay, so, so that's the, uh, what we um, try to use the, as a parametric inequality for general surface to compare the uh, integral uh, of this rearranged version of the um, function, uh, which are solutions of the PDEs. So in this way, we can compare the total sum of the integral, which will be bigger than these two standard radio symmetric solution. Um, and, and we know its area is four pi. Uh, so we, that's how we, we show this uh, as a parametric, uh, this sphere covering inequality for two dimensional problem. So in this way, we can so we use uh, as a parametric inequality, uh, particularly related to curvature of bound. And then we also uh, use a rearrangement argument. Uh, so I will come back to this later uh, when we uh, talk about higher dimensional case. Um, well, what's the use of such sphere covering inequality? Uh, so in two dimensional case with um, Amir Maradifan, we proved some uh, symmetry result for solutions of uh, Gaussian curvature type. Uh, for example, if you have a solution in, to such a, a Gaussian curvature equation, and the K is positive and increasing, say M is positive. And we want to show for some solutions which satisfy the total curvature restriction, say beta less than equal to eight pi. This quantity sometimes we call it total curvature, or uh, in some other um, setting we call it total mass. So under this condition, we show the solution must be radially symmetric, and then must be unique, because the radio sol symmetric solution in this case is unique. Well, this result uh, is somehow uh, non-trivial because we cannot use moving plane method. The, the very uh, uh, classic uh, method for showing uh, symmetry of solutions, uh, the moving plane method, which does, uh, does not work here. Um, indeed, this uh, result related, related to um, the total mass or total curvature. Um, so if the total curvature is bigger than uh, eight pi, the, the answer may not be true, could not be true. Uh, so that's the... Uh, equation, and that's the symmetry result. We applied the sphere covering inequality and to, to prove directly. Then why this uh, equation um, you know, used, is important, why should we study the symmetry result uh, of such equation? Uh, away from the uh, general Gaussian curvature equation uh, problem, I want to emphasize it also comes from the study of mosaic Schrodinger inequality uh, with constraint. So uh, let's recall the mosaic Schrodinger inequality. Um, we know that if we have solution in H1, we can control the uh, exponential of the function um, in the L1 integral, L1 norm. Uh, but in this more, uh, you know, uh, sophisticated way, because it involves the uh, logarithmic uh, subordinate embedding. Um, so, both the treatment inequality says that this functional is uh, bounded below when alpha is bigger than equal to one, and one is the base constant. On the other hand, 
uh, Moffre showed that uh, for the sphere, the standard sphere, we have uh, bigger than one, this function actually is strictly positive. Well, uh, non negative, it, it's bigger than or equal to zero. On the other hand, uh, if we restrict the function to have center of mass at the origin, so which is uh, given by this integral. And then this base constant can be reduced by half. So we still have j alpha finally below if alpha bigger than equal to one half. Well, then we wonder if the uh, minimum of the function is still zero. Actually, that's a conjecture of uh, Anish Chan and Pao Yan in their study of uh, Gaussian curvature equation. Uh, they actually also show that when alpha is close to one, but less than one, um, the minimum is zero. So they show this inequality for alpha close to one. But the conjecture that this should be true for alpha bigger than equal to one half. Uh, to show this, um, naturally, we can consider the Euler Lagrange equation of the functional, which is given by uh, this simple broken form. Uh, indeed, this Lagrange multiplier could be uh, actually proven to be zero. And so this term is gone. So, the uh, study of the problem, you ready to show this simple looking equation has only trivial solution, um, constant solution, and alpha less than equal to one, and bigger than one, one half, is this true? Um, well, this equation sometimes also arises in mathematical physics called mean field equation. Um, they just change the way of writing and interpret this rule as certain kind of mass. And you can also talk about this type of equation on general surfaces. And there are lots of research done in this direction. And I just list a partial list of the mathematicians working in this area. Okay, um, and this equation also arises uh, in the study of uh, Navier-Stokes equation in R3. Uh, if you consider the homogeneous minus one solutions to Navier-Stokes equation and consider its stream function. And the stream function also satisfy um, this uh, type of equation. Uh, so originally we showed this uh, 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 inequality for alpha bigger than some number, say 16 over 25, for actually symmetric functions. And the later, uh, we showed uh, uh, with Jun Cheng Wei and, and also in, independently by Chang Shu Lin that when alpha bigger than equal to one half. And also among actually symmetric functions, the inequality is true, conjectured by um, Anders Chan and Paul Yang. Mm -hmm. And later, um, Asif Kusup and Chang Shu Lin, they showed for general functions, um, not necessarily actually symmetric, uh, the inequality is true for alpha bigger than equal to two third. And our goal, as I said, is try to show this is one half. So using this uh, um, sphere covering inequality and using the symmetry result of uh, um, the solutions to the Gaussian curvature equation I mentioned before, we can eventually show that um, the inequality conjectured by Anderson and Paul Young is correct, it's true. Uh, so this alpha can be chosen as one half. 
for functions which has center of mass at the origin. Uh, so you have the, the average is zero. Mm. And well, because the strategy is that we know that it's true for actually symmetric function before. And if you can show the solution for the mean field equation, or in general, um, you know, this uh, um, Gaussian curvature type equation is symmetric, then we go back to the sphere, then we know the solution is actually actual symmetric. Uh, so we are done. So that's how this sphere covering inequality is related to symmetry of solutions and related to the most treating inequality. Uh, with the same idea of uh, Anish Chan and myself also showed this variation of such inequality. Um, indeed, we do not restrict the center of mass to be the origin. So we get rid of the constraint, but we put the center of mass term into the uh, uh, into the uh, integral here. So, so we subtract this center of mass from the total um, total uh, curvature or total area. Um, so if the center of mass is zero, this term will be gone. Right. So we go back to the, uh, the constrained case. But without constraint, the base we can get is two thirds. We, we do not get one half, actually it's not true. The two third is the optimum, the best uh, constant in this setting. Mm. So this is the uh, result we obtained for a uh, two dimensional case. The question is that how about higher dimensional case? Do we have similar thing? Uh, well, uh, this project is just very uh, preliminary stage. Um, we, we, we did get some result. That's what I'm going to report. Um, so for, for example, for four dimensional case and the corresponding um, problem is so-called q curvature type problem. Uh, so we look at, again, say a functional like this, which says that if you have a function in H2, space of S4 um, of the sphere, on the sphere. Then we can control the integral of the exponential of uh, the function. So particularly we write it as e to the 4u. Okay, that's the uh, um, convenient, um, convenient way to write. So this four corresponding to the dimension. And this can be controlled by the H2 norm. So H2 norm, we write it in this particular way. <coughs> um, so, and this control is true for alpha bigger than equal to one as well. And this inequality usually is called the Beckler inequality. And then the corresponding Euler Lagrange equation of this uh, functional corresponding to the so-called Panitz operator, which is a fourth order oper operator. Uh, so particularly uh, on S4, this Panitz operator can be written as by Laplacian minus two times Laplacian. So have this explicit form. Um, and this could be uh, uh, defined for general surfaces as well. General, general uh, four dimensions manifold as well. Uh, so the corresponding Euler Lagrange equation is this uh, so called the Q curvature type equation. So the leading term or the differential term is the Penis operator acting on U. The nonlinear term is again this exponential term. Uh, so our question is the same. 
if we constrain, put a constraint that uh, the center of mass is zero, can we improve the base constant alpha in the backless inequality? Uh, indeed, Branson, Chen, and Yang, they show that an alpha bigger than one half, there's a compactness and uh, the functional is bounded below. Just like a bounce you know, inequality uh, and for the constraint problem. And if we consider the minimizer of this functional and this constraint, it also satisfy the corresponding Euler on the equation with a, a Lagrange term, Lagrange multipliers. And just like in two dimensional case, uh, this Lagrange multiplier can be proven to be zero uh, by using the so-called custom Warner condition or constraint um, or obstacle. Um, so the, uh, the uh, custom Warner con condition, uh, if you're written for this kind of Q curvature equation, uh, this uh, is the Q curvature. And then the existence of solution to this equation requires this integral to be zero. Um, and this is the custom Warner condition. And this still holds for higher dimensions or particularly for four dimensions. And so use this, we can get rid of uh, uh, the Lagrange multiplier for the unconstrained problem. So we can again focus on this equation, uh, simple looking, or not, now it's not simple looking anymore, and this uh, uh, Q curvature type equation. Um, and we want to show that when alpha is less than one, there is a constant solution. There's only a constant solution to the equation. Well, which turns out to be a very difficult question. And as we know that in PDE to classify a solution to a certain equation uh, is usually very difficult and uh, non-trivial. Uh, and so what we do uh, is just like we did for two dimensional case, we start with the actually symmetric case, actually symmetric functions, and try to see uh, if solutions um, to this corresponding ODE is non, is trivial, is constant. So the ODE now, if we write in the uh, coordinates um, of the height of the sphere, uh, this is the S4. Uh, so the height we use X variable. Then you, it, will set, it will be this uh, fourth order in a uh, ordinary different equation. And the alpha is the constant we will try to focus. And we want to show that solution must be constant when an alpha between one half and one. Well, um, this equation we can write in different way. Uh, sometimes we can write in this uh, equivalent form, which uh, sometimes will be useful. Um, well, the corresponding functional we can also write in this one dimensional case. Uh, so it will be um, just in terms of the variable x, uh, we have this uh, weighted functional. And we want to show this is uh, bigger than equal to zero. We alpha uh, between one half and one under this constraint, this uh, center of mass constraint. Now, if we write in, in terms of uh, uh, one dimension, the variable x, we have this weight. 
Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, even for this actually this uh, symmetric case, we do not get the uh, um, complete uh, answer yet, but we make some preliminary uh, progress. Uh, that is, we offer between this number, 0 0.517, which is slightly bigger than one half. We show that the corresponding ODE has only constant solution. And as a consequence, we show that this functional is bounded below by zero. Uh, for this constraint problem. And of course, we hope that uh, we can, this inequality could be true for alpha to one half. Mm. Well, uh, with this result, we can also uh, get a so-called Zegger type inequality. Uh, which basically use the same functional, but replace the last term uh, by the center of mass with, with a, a term of center of mass, uh, just as we did before for two dimensional case. And if the center of uh, origin center of mass is zero, this term will be zero. Right? So we get back to the original um, Bechner uh, functional. But in this case, uh, we can show that alpha equals five, four over five, four fifths. This inequality is true. So the is bounded below by zero. Um, and this number, we, we can see it's uh, smaller than one and bigger than the number we just get. Um, and this is actually an optimum result uh, for this function, for this uh, Zegger type uh, inequality. Mm. And another uh, interesting fact is that when alpha equals one half, which is less than one, uh, sorry, when alpha equals equal to one fifth, which is less than one half. And the corresponding ODE has only constant solution. And this fact actually has some significance. Um, we can actually uh, use this fact to do some bifurcation analysis of this ODE with alpha as a parameter. So uh, let me draw a picture uh, of the solution curves, solution curves. Okay, so instead of vector alpha, we write one of alpha as the parameter. And this is a solution set. And if we consider uh, the alpha equals uh, one half, you will be here. Number equals two, this is one. Uh, um, alpha equals one. So we know that when alpha equals one, there's a family of solution, ODEs to the um, force of the uh, equation. Uh, and we alpha equals five, uh, one, one over five, so lambda equals five, there's only one, uh, there's only constant solution. But we know there's actually bifurcation happening here. This can be computed. Uh, And we also know that in this range, so alpha uh, equals uh, uh, 0 0.15, uh, 517, so somewhere here, there's only constant solution. So, so we can normalize it to be trivial solution, to be zero solution. So this, this bifurcation branch, there must be Let me uh, use a red color. So must go to the left. It cannot 
come back and cross this uh, uh, this line, right? Because we have only trivial solution for alpha equals one over five. And on the other hand, the uh, analysis uh, done before by many other people uh, actually shows that blow up of such solution, the Q curvature equation, just like the Gaussian curvature equation, and only happens when alpha is a positive integer. So, so, so when num, so when, when, when actually when lambda is a positive integer, so alpha is one over positive integer. So this application branch can only blow up um, when alpha goes to one half. So that's the kind of a uh, uh, solution picture or diagram for this ODE when we take a alpha or lambda as a parameter. Uh, so we, we know there are always non-trivial uh, non solution in this range for alpha. And this actually also imply that uh, uh, there is no symmetry result uh, uh, for the corresponding um, questions, uh, which um, I will mention later. Um, so that's uh, what uh, uh, we obtained for the uh, problem for four dimensions. And uh, um, still here, we're still not completely sure uh, this is the right picture uh, because there's small chance that the bifurcation branch could go cross this uh, you know, uh, line, then come back and then blow up at zero. So if that's the case, then the best constant in the constraint problem may not be one half. So it may be something bigger than one half. So in that case, then uh, of course it's, uh, uh, it makes sense to have a, a, a result like a, a one, a 0 0.517. So uh, anyway, <coughs> that's the uh, problem we have tried for higher dimensions. And indeed we, we can try for general two dimensional space and the two dimensional, um, um, you know, two N penance operator, uh, which is of this form. Well, it, 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 it's basically the generalization of a four dimensional case, but more complicated. Uh, we get also result for six and eight dimensions. Okay. Um, for higher dimensions, for technical reason, we cannot uh, uh, get the result um, so far. Even for for ODE and for the preliminary result, for for six and eight dimension, we have this uh, corresponding number of the lower bound or, or best constant or improved constant. Okay. Uh, well. The goal, again, is try to show the whole uh, conjecture or inequality for alpha up to be one half and also for general functions. But this is, seems to be a very difficult question. Uh, if we try to use the two dimensional strategy to, to do so, to, to tackle this problem, then we have a, a question of, do we have a sphere covering inequality in higher dimensions or some type of sphere covering inequality? Uh, second is that, do we have some kind of a, an example of both inequality for higher dimensions? Basically that's as a parametric inequality related, relating to the curvature um, of um, um, the surface or manifold. And there's also, corresponding eigenvalue problem uh, for higher dimensional domain. Um, but with some kind of um, right 
boundary condition. And more uh, from the PDE point of view, we can actually have to study this uh, equation, um, higher order equation, say in R RN, with a coefficient. And this coefficient is increasing. So L is positive uh, under some kind of uh, a total curvature constraint. Uh, so this, uh, this total curvature is beta. For some beta, some range of beta or some you know, a condition of beta, um, can, we, can we classify the solution? And those are, are the questions we, uh, we want to do, but it uh, seems uh, very difficult. And uh, uh, you know, uh, that's the uh, question. And, we're still struggling. Okay, maybe I'll stop here. Thank you for your patience. Okay, thanks, Cheng Feng. So let's see, are there questions, comments? I have a quick question. Uh, so, what's what's the expectation for you for the classifications of the solution? The the, the last part that you mentioned. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the the uh, expectation that uh, for the range, uh, there's a range of beta, uh, which uh, corresponding to to alpha, the beta corresponding to alpha. Uh, and also, of course, dimension. Yeah? And, and also the solution say, uh, we know uh, in, um, uh, in the um, uh, case that this coefficient is one in the, 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 the um, standard, um, Penance of Penance uh, equation, and there is a classification. The solution must be radio symmetric. Uh, if the solution behaves like a little x squared, uh, uh, yeah, if if you, then it must be radio symmetric. Um, it is true for, for such a, a problem with coefficient, not constant, it's uh, increasing. Actually, if the co coefficient is decreasing, if L is negative, and this can be proven by using moving plane method. Um, but now if we do not assume L is negative, actually the, the one we are interested in is L is positive. Can we show that the solution is uh, radio symmetric? So uh, now, of course, if we show radio symmetry, uh, there's also a question, are the uh, radio symmetric solutions unique? Which actually is not known. At least um, in general, we, don't know, we, don't know, we do not know, but with, the translation of our result for the axisymmetric case to the um, to this uh, um, form on our end, we have uniqueness of the solution for dimension four, six, and eight, but uh, alpha close to one, say bigger than you know, the corresponding number we, we obtained. Other questions? So I, I have a very quick question, Chan Feng. So, this, so these, can you analyze them using some numerics? I mean, can you go to the computer and try to, to have an idea what happens for, for the range 
closer um, enough or no? Uh, that's a very uh, good question. Actually, uh, I was thinking about doing that, but we have not done that yet. This number, uh, this zero point one five, this this number is just from the uh, analysis. Uh, just so we have not used computation uh, method uh, to uh, compute this ODE solutions uh, numerically. No, not yet. Uh, maybe I will, you know, someday get a, a student or or someone who, who is good at numeric computation to do so. Yeah. But one thing we, we, we see that is that from uh, asymptotic analysis, um, we know that the blow up of the bifurcation branch eventually has to be from the right side of one hand. You cannot blow up like this on the left hand side of one hand. And, and numerically, yeah, uh, hopefully yeah, we can analyze this uh, branch of uh, um, solutions numerically and see if it's always the on the left hand side or right hand side of one half. Okay. Okay, yeah. so thanks. Uh, are there other questions? If not, let's thank uh, Chang Feng for a very nice talk. Thank you. We do. Mm. Okay, sorry for the delay, but uh, I think it was fine. Yeah. 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 Okay.